All right, guys, let's see how this machine does. This is a walking presser foot machine. This is not a walking foot. Remember, let's review again. A walking presser foot is, you can see this has this little bracket and stuff, and the presser foot walks like this, okay? That is not necessarily a walking foot machine. Some people sell them as them. I know Sailrite has them, and they say that that's a walking foot, but that's not and what most people would consider not a walking foot but um, it does sew some automotive upholstery there are some disadvantages to it um, because the the normal walking foot the needle goes forward and pulls it through so the needle actually this rod right here oscillates and the needle comes forward and pokes through and then pulls the material back that's a regular walking foot machine this is a walking presser foot machine now these are good, but they have limitations on what you can do. And for instance, when you put, when you have a walking foot machine, a regular walking foot, not a walking presser foot like this, uh, and you put your, you set your thing at, let's say three millimeters, um, that stitch is always gonna be three millimeters because the needle is gonna lift out and it's gonna move forward three millimeters and it's gonna poke through. This one, the feed dogs are what uh, makes it uh, go three millimeters. So these actual, let's look at one. The feed dogs are these teeth here, are what, and there's feed dogs on the bottom, okay? Those two things are what decides how far it's gonna go forward. So it, you know, if you have it set at three millimeters, it might do three millimeters most of the time, but if it's having any difficulty getting through the material, if it's having trouble pulling that for some reason, then it's not going to go exactly three millimeters. So sewing pleats with this machine is probably not going to be the best thing to do. It's probably not going to come out very good. I'm not going to say it isn't. Most of the time, you're going to be disappointed. Um, so that's why they upholstery, they recommend using a walking foot machine. So if you're looking to buy one, that's probably the one to look for. Yeah, they're more expensive. Yeah, they cost a lot more. Like this one I got for like 300 bucks, I mean, three to $400 from that range, you can find one of these. But, you know, if you wanna spend a little bit more money, you can get the walking foot machine. Even the old Singer 111 or something like that um, would be fine. You can probably find parts for that a lot cheaper than you can for one of these as well. So like your, like your Welting foots and stuff like that are going to be more expensive for this machine. So it, just keep that in mind Or for, for one of these types of machines typically. Unless you buy the portable one from Sailrite. That's kind of a nice little machine because it's portable and you can put it away. But again, there are some disadvantages to that. You don't have a table. Um, it's, it's a little harder to feed um, when you're doing a larger project. And it's fine for doing boat seats and stuff like that because you're typically not putting pleats in. So... I'm just trying to give you some ideas, but you're going to find yourself, you know, kind of painting yourself in a corner eventually, and you're going to want to get a bigger machine. You're going to want to get a walking foot machine. So I'm just going to show you what you can do with this machine if you end up getting one of these. And, uh, you know, there are some good things about it. I, I have, set, have mine set up for the standard 1 8. The standard for automotive typically is 1 8. Okay. Some of the old cars were three sixteenths, okay, and but that's about the far as it goes. Um, and you're gonna have trouble. You're gonna have to make your own welt if you do anything bigger than that, um, because you're just not gonna find it pre-made. This is a pre-made welt. It's a lot easier uh, to use. In fact, you can get some of the other ones possibly off Sailrite's website. But if that's if you want to order stuff, I go to JNG Auto Fabrics in Rialto. And that's where I pick up my stuff, and they always have the typical automotive stuff. Also have the V92 thread, which is your typical. Most people use v V92. There's also one called 177, 138. Uh, I forget the numbers of them because I don't use those. Uh, the 138 is a little thicker than this one. The 177 is for what some people use on uh, real heavy you know, leather, and <clears throat> they're trying to really get their it looks like rope when you do your pleats so sometimes they're using that uh, because they want to have a really you know prominent looking pleat so 
again, that's not going to work on this machine. The 138 will work on here. The 177 possibly, but um, I might have some tangle ups and stuff like that with that thick of the thick of a uh, I call it rope because <laughs> it's thick thread, really thick thread. It, and I think this machine, I've drawn it on this machine. It will work, but it's you know you need a big needle. So I'll stick you guys up here. Let's maybe get you a little closer so you can see how's that. And then uh, we'll just sew. I'm going to go ahead and this. I'm using a welting foot, one eighth welting foot, and I'm going to sew this on here. I'm going to show you guys an example of how it turns out, and then um, we'll possibly we'll finish up the seat and we'll put it on, or we'll do some sections of it so you can see what it looks like. And I may speed this portion up, but um, and put some on a little more interesting than my voice. And we'll just keep moving forward. I'll talk to you in the next portion. This was my bad. I should have actually put the welt on top on the first stitch because then if I put this on top like this and I ran it through this way, I could see that it was right along even with the edge and then my next one, when I sew that, it would just follow, you know, the welt, the welting foot will kind of follow this most of the time. It'll walk off of it if you're not careful. But, um, well, think if it'll follow, I know that looks ugly, but it'll be covered up with the next stitch anyway. So, probably should have put this on first this way, and then just stitch through there, and then, like this, put it through this way. So that way I can see my distance is right, and stays in the same place. It's a little easier to manage, and you can see that your stitching is going through the welt in the right place. Uh, so I did it the wrong way the first time. So the first time yeah, I do, I put the welt on first, and then what I do is I'll put the next pieces around it. It'll still turn out okay. And, you know, it's alright for me. I'm just showing you realities. You know, this isn't, you know, some expert sitting there using a, a machine and, you know, you guys think, wow, you know, I can do that too. Well, no, not really. Maybe not. Maybe you could. Maybe you're better at it than me. That's probably the case. I'm not very good at this, but anyway. I will just do the next stitch, and we'll see how it turns out. I'm going to go ahead and make my pattern. The next thing I'm going to do is I make a pattern from this corner. Well, I can't see that, can you? Let me back you up a little bit. It's from this corner here to this one right here where I've already put this piece on the back. I actually like to make this all in one piece, but I messed up. I was going to make this part all in one piece with the top. It's just a little easier, but I just went ahead and stitched one on there, and then I'll just work into it. All right, so I'm going to make my piece from... Actually, I'm going to make the whole front. So I'm going to make... I'm going to mark the center of this. So I'll mark that, and I'll make this the center. I'll put a center mark with chalk. And these videos are like, if I can do this, you can do it, because I am not an expert at this, okay? Center mark with chalk. So when I make, I'm going to make these three pieces. So I'm going to make one for the front, goes across here, one for the side, and one for this side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, chalk the center of that, okay? Then what I do is I start in the center, and I go this direction, in frame to center go this direction and a center and go that direction and then that way um, 
it come my my corners come out pretty close in the right place you know where these things go down we'll see you a little bit later we'll see how it turns out talk to you a little later in the video All right, so this is what we ended up with. I did sew through right here, which is drag. You know, I kind of missed my stitch. That's why I said I should have put the the next one. Of course, this is the passenger seat in the bottom. I had a little wrinkle right here. I just took the heat gun and started washing it. And start, as soon as it starts to move a little bit, stop. If you keep going, it'll melt it, and you'll have problems. But I just started to, right when it's just, we, you're putting the heat gun over it, and all of a sudden... It just starts to starts to stretch out just a little bit, move away, and then that went down all that. So when that seat's on there, it should be covered up pretty good. It doesn't look terrible, but this is about what you can do with that machine. Um, somebody could, you know, of course I could do a better job, but putting pleats in, no, nah, I don't think so. If you saw all the strings and the stuff like that, it just doesn't work that great. Yeah, heat gun it up a little bit. It took. You know, got to be patient putting them on. You got to take your time. You you'll think the thing will never fit. You start just putting it on, putting it on, hitting it with your hand, and then just knocking it around, and and just you'll move it. You know that much, <laughs> and it'll just go on. Finally, little by little, all of a sudden you'll go, oh wow, it's gonna fit, and it goes on. So they stretch. You know, it's all about stretching it. So anyway, yeah, I could use white thread. I probably should have used the other, but that's all right. You know. It'll look good inside here. Yeah, good enough. I mean, if you're in Southern California, you can always call Garza's Upholstery if he's still in business. I don't know. You know, the pandemic took out a lot of businesses, so he hopefully he's still around. G A R Z Z A S. And he's in uh, Azusa. He does a way better job, but and he's very inexpensive as far as stuff go. But um, you know, if you don't have that, and you're somewhere out in the world, and you tired of some of these entitled upholstery guys i mean i, I went to one in it and he goes well how many i go how much soap to seeds he goes 1200 i'm like wow they're all cut patterned and everything i said just sew it up you know and everything 1200 dollars. i was like you know that so that's kind of what's happening so anyway i just figured i'll just show a few things on how to do it i'm not the greatest at it obviously you know my work isn't the greatest i'm not you know trying to be a professional or anything i'm just showing you that if i can do it you can do it you know what i mean that's what i'm saying it's not it's not about how look at look at how nice i can do this no it's about if i can do this maybe you can do it that's the way anyway i'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe i hope it helped you get through a few little bit of things to know and Maybe you'll learn how to do your own upholstery.